So if I select the plus button up top, we have the expense that it, the, I'm sorry, the bill that is entered and then the pay bills form. So if I go into the pay bills data input form, it's a little bit different than other forms because it'll basically, again, have a list of the bills that we can pay. And then I can select multiple bills if I want to pay them, you know, at one time, which will create not just one form, but multiple forms. So remember the pay bill form is like a check form. It could be a check or an expense kind of form, but it's going to show up in the transaction detail as a pay bill form, which gives us a little bit more de detail about the transaction just by the name, meaning it's going to decrease the checking account because it's a it's basically a check type form. But the other side we know is going to decrease accounts payable as opposed to paying off the telephone or something like that just by the name of the of the transaction type. So it's going to be coming out of the checking account and I'm going to say the date, let's say is the is uh, I'm going to say the 28th, let's say 28. And then I'm going to say the check number. We should be on 11. I'm sorry. One, I'm apologizing, apologizing to the micro, stop apologizing to the microphone. So we've got the 1011. The reason it was, it was wrong before is because I changed the check numbers because they were out of order before. So it was taking the next one after the last one I changed. Otherwise it would automatically be populating at uh, the right check number. We're not going to print them. If we were going to be printing them, we'd put checks into the printer to print them. And this is a nice tool to be printing checks. If you're using that method, you would have to buy the checks, pre-print, you know, pre-printed checks, but then print this information on them, meaning the checks already have a check number on them and you want to match up the check numbers here uh, to your check numbers, and then you can print them. The reason this is nice is you could, you could check off multiple checks in here uh, that are to be printed and, and basically print them you know, at one time and so on. And so then you're going to select the items you, you've got, you've got your filtering items. If we had any need for some filtering options, the due date and the payee and then, or the overdue only. And we only have one item in here. So clearly that's not a problem. We could sort this way with the triangle this way. We could sort by these items as well within the triangle. And then when we pay them off, we can select the whole thing. It'll then put the dollar amount here. If we're paying less than that amount, we can just populate less than that amount and we'll still have a balance then outstanding. Okay, so let's do it. What's this gonna do? It's gonna decrease the checking account. The other side's gonna decrease the accounts payable and the sub ledger for the vendor of uh, Epiphone will decrease as well. And so down below we have the option of save, save and print or save and close. We're just gonna do the save and close. Let's do it. And then if I go to the middle tab for the balance sheet, I think this is all we need. I'm going to scroll up. The checking account should have a decrease now. Should have gone down. There it is. Notice it's decreasing with a check type form because that's the form, the form that the, the generic form you should think of for a decrease to the checking account is a check form. And then the expense form is kind of a variant of the check form. It's a check form with no number. And then the bill payment form is once again a variant of the check form which could have a number if i if it was a electronic transfer then i could just delete you know the number and it would be like like an expense form in essence right with without a check number on it but it would still be decreasing the checking account but it's special because and just by me knowing it's a bill payment form i know the other sides go into accounts payable and not to an expense account or like a fixed asset account or something like that. Now there's pros and cons to that, by the way, because remember before we talked about the, the idea that having everything as a deposit being an increase could be nice because then when I filter, I can filter by just my increases. When I have these other forms, they give me more information. But now when I filter by something that decreases by transaction type, I've got to pick up expenses, checks and bill payment, these special forms as well. So in other words, there's often a lot of transactions in the checking account. And it's often the case where I might have a situation where I want to customize and filter the forms and look for those things that are decreases to the checking account. If I want to look at all decreases now, I've got to do the check form. And we've got now I have to also include the bill payment check in order to pick them all up. And I have to pick up the expense form rather than rather than and there's going to be more than that when we pay off the sales tax and whatnot, rather than all the decreases just being like one kind of form. 
So not so there's pros and cons to having that more detail on the transaction types, having more different variants in the transaction type. Because I can already see that that added information here too, that it's going to accounts payable and the split. But in any case, if I go up and the other side's going to the A to the P, there it is, A to the P, MUI, B to the N. And so there it is. So we started here, we decreased it, and now it's down to zero. If you go into that, it'll take you to the form, bill payment form, boom, closing that out, scrolling back up, and then the sub ledger to the right is now down to zero. If I run it again, nothing's there because we don't have any AP at the point. We'll do more AP in uh, month two. Back to the first tab, if I open up the boogie, the boogie and go to the expenses and the vendors, then if I'm tracking my vendors, I'm gonna undo this, go down to Epiphone. So if I go to Epiphone, close up the boogie. So now we've got uh, the bills that have been entered. Here's the bill. So if I go into that bill, I can see that uh, it's been paid. The amount has been paid. So you got kind of that link of it having been paid. Hold on a sec. This isn't the bill. This is the bill payment. There's the bill. Here's the bill payment linking to the bill. And then the actual bill is down here. And the bill has been paid. That's what I was looking for. And there's the <laughs> there's the link to the payment. So that linkage is, is kind of nice because and if you if you learned accounting in a textbook, you probably haven't learned like these linkages from the internal bookkeeping side, which is useful. The forms kind of being tied together. This isn't having an impact on the financial statements, but it's important if I was to talk to a vendor to, to be able to easily kind of look in that bill and say, okay, yeah, the bill uh, has been paid and when it has been paid. Now note, if I went into the, the bill payment, whenever you see the bill payment, you're always gonna be thinking, okay, it's a bill payment. That means the other side went to accounts payable, which means I don't know what was actually purchased in terms of like expense category. So to get to the expense category, I've got to go to the actual bill because that's where the actual income statement was hit. This went to other miscellaneous because it was the beginning balance. So, so that's going to be that. And then, so that is that no impact on the income statement because the income statement was impacted when you entered the bill, which was in the prior period in this case, because it was a beginning balance.